The English are famous for the love of their country garden, so it's little surprise that in 2003 we bought and sold over 4 million spades and shovels. They're simple tools, but have you ever stopped to wonder how a rake or even a shovel is put together? Working the land is a tough job, so garden tools need to be equally tough to cope. That's why here at the factory production starts with large sheets of steel. These are cut to shape using a rather unusual knife that doesn't have a metal blade at all. Instead, it cuts the steel using a high-pressure jet of water. Next, the steel blanks will be fired in this furnace. The burning coal leaves carbon deposits on the steel, which makes it harder and more robust. This will produce a good quality hand-forged shovel. Once it's been toughened, it's time for a beating. With around 30 blows from his 80 kilogram hammer, the engineer shapes the blade of the shovel. Once the large hammer has done the heavy duty work, a lighter hammer is used to smooth out any dents. The blade is then returned to the fire for more hardening. This process is repeated a couple of times until the engineer is satisfied. The next step trims the blade down. The hammering process has spread the metal out of shape, so the blade is marked and cut down to a standard size. And finally, the finished blade is returned to the fire. The engineer will heat the shovel head, scrape it clean, and place it in the press. Here, it will be given its characteristic shape using 120 tons of pressure. Next, the welder will add the socket. This is a piece of metal made of softer steel, which acts as a shock absorber, damping the impact of heavy blows. It's also got a useful hole where the handle will be attached later. All of the work has left the blades a little dirty, so they're rinsed in soap and sent to an ultrasound bath. Sound waves will shake loose any unwanted dirt. The new shovel blade now gets some cosmetic work to make it ready for shop shelves and to improve performance. Here, it's being sharpened. This will save the gardener some effort when working an old bed of roses in tough soil. Back in the furnace room, the engineer is hardening more steel. But this will be used to make rakes instead of shovels. This time, the engineer is hardening preformed bars. These will be used to form the rake's tines or prongs. Using a different press, he will crush each bar so the end resembles a point but this process leaves extra metal attached to the tips. Using a guillotine, he can now trim away the excess, giving the tines sharp points perfect for a rake. Then they are sharpened even further, which will help the dedicated gardener to do his job more easily. Finally, the points are cut to length. A dedicated press will cut the spike from the end of the bar. It takes eight of these carefully prepared tines to make a new rake head. They're mounted in a special vise that will hold them all in line. But there's no robotic welder here. Handmade tools require more time, effort and expertise. Next, a socket is attached and welded into place for the handle. And now the rake is bent into shape, which will make raking up all those leaves so much easier. When all the heads have been completed, whether for a shovel, a rake or even a pitchfork, they're sent to the handle department. High quality woods like ash or cherry are used to make a strong handle that won't crack under pressure. The wooden shaft is fitted to the socket and checked. 
If it isn't straight, it won't be up to the job. The two parts are then fitted into a vise, hammered together and screwed up tightly. For the shovel, a stronger handle is needed to cope with heavier work. A pressurized vise squeezes the blade and handle together, and the two parts are riveted for extra strength. So, whether you're raking leaves in the autumn or shoveling fresh compost in the spring, a well-made garden tool is a must. Still to come, we'll find out why disposal experts are going underground to keep us safe from toxic waste and how to keep mum, dad and baby happy. The surprising secret ingredient that makes disposable nappies indispensable.